So here we are in Surprise Church. We're underneath the main body of the church in the actual crypts and vaults where the individuals would have been buried in their lead coffins. These would have been higher status uh, individuals. The church, unfortunately, was bombed in the Second World War and was badly damaged. And in the 1950s, Professor Grimes did the first archaeological excavation of a City of London church. And that revealed individuals that had been buried in the crypts and also revealed an iron coffin. What we didn't know was whether the iron coffin had actually been used for burying somebody or just as a patent. It also was rather small and very narrow, so again it was difficult to ascertain whether it had been used by an individual. I was fortunate enough to be able to come to analyse the individuals that were retained from those excavations in the 1950s and with detective work with the conservation team at the Museum of London and myself, looking on the lid you could see the outline of where a coffin plate would have been. And the coffin plates for 227 individuals are retained here as well. And by looking through those and the top of the iron coffin, we were able to work out that the plate belonged to a lady called Mrs Anna Campbell and she's one of the ladies who is retained here. She died in 1819 and she was 63 years old when she died and that was an important date when she died because it was before the Anatomy Act and she was concerned that something was going to happen to her after death and she requested to be buried in a suitable means so that she couldn't be taken for dissection and she was the lady that was buried then in the iron coffin that was found here and it's a unique example because although there's been lots of excavations within London we've never actually come across an iron coffin before. And so this is a, a fascinating example of how people went to great lengths to try to protect their bodies. So here is the iron coffin from St Bride's um, in the conservation lab, nearly fully conserved. When it first came to us, it was full of dust and debris which had fallen from the ceiling of the crypt where it had been on open display and also along all the outside edges there was heavy amounts of sort of dust and dirt and crustacean. Um, it really hadn't been looked at at all since it was first excavated. So our first job really was to clear that out, which we did very methodically, very gradually, um, so that we didn't disturb any of the internal features which we could just about make out throughout all the debris that had fallen inside it. We also did a lot of dusting and cleaning on the outside, both this main coffin and also the lid that comes with it. Um, which we did very slowly with a brush and vacuum, also so as not to disturb any of the decorative features, such as um, the border decoration, which is on the lid, um, and also the base that you can see here. So when we'd finished cleaning everything, we really had to try to identify what materials we had. So we took some samples and we did some SEM imaging analysis. So we found the use of wool and then some loose packing materials, something like sawdust probably was used. So after we'd completed our analysis, we moved on to some consolidation just to um, really strengthen those materials that were quite loose and fragile um, inside the coffin. And then we also lacquered along the outside just to preserve those features in situ um, and make them more understandable for the viewing public. So we're here in the churchyard of St Bride's um, and if you weren't wealthy enough to be able to be afforded to be buried in the crypt, you might have ended up here in the churchyard, which although it's paved now, would have been um, earth and soil um, in the 18th and 19th century. Now the reason that resurrection men were able to operate and the reason that the market existed was because there was high demand from surgeon anatomists for these bodies. Um, and we know that the public were aware of resurrection men operating from the early 1700s. Um, however, as the trade grew and as more and more people wanted to study uh, surgery and anatomy, uh, the demand increased and that meant that particularly during the 1820s and 30s there was very high demand for corpses and the resurrection men could charge a huge amount for the bodies that they dug up. So people were particularly afraid of being dissected because it was a really destructive process. Um, you wouldn't necessarily go back into the ground as a whole individual. You would have parts removed, muscles cut through, various organs um, cut away and inspected so you could very well have gone back into the ground as a series of various bits. Now if you were wealthy you might be able to afford to be buried in a metal coffin and we know that these were in use from about the 1780s onwards. Um, however the patent coffin that was actually invented in 1818 which we believe Mrs Campbell has been buried in actually had a special mechanism to lock the lid down and prevent people from prying the lid open. So it was specially designed to frustrate the efforts of a resurrection man specifically. 
Now, if you couldn't afford to do that, as most Londoners couldn't at the time, you might employ much simpler methods. And this would probably include um, hiding little tokens on top of the grave soil. It could be something like a, as simple as a stone or a shell or a flower that you put in a particular spot and you would notice if, if the soil had been disturbed. However, resurrection men were well aware of this um, and would always be very careful to check for these tokens before they started digging a grave up and then replace them when they were finished. The mark of a good resurrection man and a professional resurrection man was to leave a grave exactly as he had found it.